this is Kevin with Fighting Fear with Kevin Ashworth, um, where I talk about things related to anxiety, fear, uh, intention, behavior, parenting, parenting anxious kids, social anxiety disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, panic disorder. Um, I'm here to talk about something very particular today, which is around the, the, the realm of social anxiety, but also anxiety going to the bathroom in public. I have been meaning to do a video uh, lately and have been putting it off and have lots of excuses why, so I apologize if you're still subscribing to my channel. I appreciate it very much and I'm going to work hard um, at creating a schedule so I can and do this more consistently and provide free and, and hopefully valuable content to you guys. So my plan this week was to write down um, some some of the things that I'm going to talk about. I get quite a few questions via email um, and then also just daily from my clients. So I am a therapist and run an anxiety clinic in Portland. What I'm not gonna go in today is necessarily the theory behind how I treat anxiety and what the evidence says the treatment of anxiety is. In a nutshell, it's about building tolerance and not coping. Individuals with social anxiety, of course, worry about the uncertainty of making a mistake or looking foolish or, or feeling terribly uncomfortable in a social situation. This comes into play so much when we have to use the bathroom because we don't talk about pooping and peeing in public or we don't talk about it generally and then we don't really like to do it in public. So I get up early, uh, I made it to a coffee shop this morning at about six o'clock, uh, got into the clinic here, it's nine o'clock now, so I was at the coffee shop for a few hours and I was actually thinking about what, what kind of things am I gonna talk about uh, this week and, and having a goal of uh, producing at least one, two, one YouTube video every week. Well, I have my morning cup of coffee and I went to use the restroom, had to go poop. Now, by itself is not an interesting story, nor is it something that I would share. But what I did do when I went to the bathroom is I forgot to lock the door. And it just so happened that the one attractive, well, the only woman actually in the coffee shop, out about maybe five people max, this is pretty early in the morning, it was about seven o'clock, opened the door on me. She was more surprised than I was, uh, thankfully. Uh, but I felt it. I felt that anxiety. I felt that pain in the stomach. My brain immediately looked around for what window could I crawl out of and not have to leave and go back into the coffee shop. And, and I think many of us would acknowledge that feeling of leave the, uh, leave the laptop, just run. <laughs> leave your car keys, just go. Because uh, the feeling was so distressing. So I had to smile at that point because there's no way out of this bathroom except the one door I came in. And of course, it's the one bathroom in this relatively small coffee shop. Why is this so embarrassing? Partly is because one of the common themes with social anxiety disorder is this, this idea that we're not competent, that people will see us as flawed or, or imperfect in some way. And that although we all know at a basic level, we are, of course, because we all poop and pee, we have connected somehow these very normal bodily functions with shame. Uh, with distress, with embarrassment. That felt very embarrassing for me. The difference between individuals with social anxiety disorder and other people that just feel is the appraisal and the opinion and the perspective of what that feeling means. Many individuals with social anxiety disorder or other anxiety disorders believe that the goal is to not feel that if they get better, it would mean that they wouldn't have all these physical symptoms uh, when engaging socially, and that, in fact, when they have these physical symptoms, that that's evidence that something bad is happening. And it's just not, but when that's connected to a thought, we obviously believe it. So, although that was terribly embarrassing for me, I survived. Now, how would someone with social anxiety maybe do it differently? Sometimes it's very subtle. And I, I thought about this. And so they may leave that bathroom and not make any eye contact. Or they may leave the bathroom and actually say something kind of out loud and draw more attention to themselves, kind of that, you know, I'll be the first one being vulnerable so I don't have to feel vulnerable. They may just pack up and leave. Um, it all depends on what your actual intention and behavior was prior to going into the coffee shop. So I was actually planning on leaving, hence why I went to the bathroom before I left. But it's really important for me to know my decision making of why I left. Because if I would have left purely out of that distress, that's a decision based on fear and anxiety wins. 
If I was leaving because that's the plan I already had, then I'm making a decision based on preference. And the goal is to make more decisions throughout your day based on preference and fear. Some folks with social anxiety would never go back to that coffee shop. They would never show their face for fear that um, they would bump into that person again, that they would remember them. And in and, and, and even more extreme cases or typical cases of social anxiety, they may now perseverate on that or spend a lot of time thinking about what that was like for that person, what that was like for them, and possibly avoid going uh, to coffee shops for a while or making sure that if they do, they will not need to go to the bathroom. Or if they have to go to the bathroom, they will check that lock over and over and over. And this was one of those locks that you can't check because if you check it, it pops open. You know which one I'm talking about? So it, it wasn't the deadbolt kind. So I even thought about it when I, when I went into the small bathroom, um, but it was not locked. Now, when I left, the person didn't even look at me, didn't make eye contact with me. I was kind of assessing for that. I thought that would be interesting to see. Uh, interestingly, she did not go back to the bathroom either. <laughs> so uh, I'm not sure what that's about, and I will not pretend to, uh, to guess her, her motivations or her intention, nor how that was for her. Um, we all have to manage this stuff. So what, what can you get out of this, this story? One, we're all imperfect. We all do things that feel really uncomfortable. Just because it feels bad does not make it true. How many decisions today can you make based on preference versus fear? And you know what that means. They can be so subtle. And can you make more today on preference than you did yesterday? And that's really the goal for overcoming anxiety is you build tolerance by feeling bad and, and moving forward anyway. And then if, you're, if there's no opportunities for you to challenge your anxiety, can you create those? It's not convenient to challenge anxiety or distress. You can't wait for another opportunity where someone walks in on you in the bathroom. So you have to create the feeling of distress. And for some of you, that might be just going to a coffee shop. That might be ordering a cup of coffee. That might be paying for a cup of coffee with, um, with dollar bills or change because it takes longer or, or choosing to wait in line even though that feels very conspicuous. So if you can apply this very subtle idea of behaving with intention and not being uh, diverted based on what your brain, your anxious thoughts say, or what your feeling says, that's emotional reasoning. Just because it feels bad doesn't make it true. You can hopefully have a, a day where you feel confident because you've made more decisions than yesterday. It doesn't have to be every decision and you can't give up years and years of, of programming and, and habits and behavior. So be kind to yourself. Um, if you like this video, and you would expect to see more videos weekly, I promise. Uh, again, I'm, I'm gonna stop waiting till I have enough time or it feels right, I'm gonna make time. I'm gonna schedule this in and make it a priority. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, it is helpful if you like the video as well, I really appreciate that. And then also, um, I have just started an Instagram page, Preference Over Fear, um, and so if you'd like to follow me on there, I will be posting uh, just comments about anxiety, uh, maybe clips of the YouTube videos as well. So um, thank you so much for watching today. Uh, please subscribe, check out um, my Instagram, Preference Over Fear, and uh, plan on getting a video from me soon. Take care.